Hey YouTube, I'm starting a new series called Low End Tech. And what we're gonna do here is actually take a lot of low end technology, could be recent or could be old laptops, cell phones or stuff like that, and we're gonna be creating new uses for them. And in this episode, we're gonna be converting a Raspberry Pi B Plus to a torrent box or turn server or seed box, whatever you want, guys wanna call it. Alright, so what we're going to be using is a Raspberry Pi B+. Plus. Uh, we're going to need a SD card, a micro USB, and a um, network cable or Wi-Fi dongle, depending on what you need to use. Now here we're going to download the Debian image from raspberrypi.org. Raspberry and I'm going to leave all the links in the descriptions below. Now, uh, let's talk about the Raspberry for a little bit. The, uh, one of these little tiny things are about, th well, they're about $35. Now, the one that I have, again, it's single core, 900 megahertz, 512 megs of RAM, and you could use these things in various amount of projects from DIY robots or um, servers like what we're doing over here. Um, you could actually turn them into like webcams, and there's a lot of things, a lot of possibilities that you could use the Raspberry Pi for. And um, we're going to be doing a lot more projects in the future probably with the Raspberry Pi because they're just so versatile. Alright now, after the download is finished, what you're going to want to do is extract the file anywhere that you're going to remember. Uh, I usually leave it in the download folder. You could put it on your desktop. Any place that you're going to remember because you're going to be using this image file to load it back into the SD card so your Raspberry Pi could boot from. All right, now that you're done uh, extracting that file, we're gonna go ahead and download another program called um, a Win32 Disk Image, but I'm gonna leave a link in the descriptions below where you can download it. And from there, um, we are gonna use that to load the image that you extracted onto the SD card. And yes, this is the only way to do it in Windows. Uh, in Linux, you could actually just type in a command. You don't need to download additional programs. But for Windows, this is what you're gonna to need to use. All right, from here on, uh, you gotta to remember to run the Windows Imager in administration mode. So go to the Start menu, right-click, Run as Administrator. That will allow you to run the Windows Imager. Uh, select the USB drive or the SD card that um, that you're gonna load the file into. Then uh, select um, the little browse button to load your Debian image and then hit write. Then here on it's going to take a couple of minutes to load everything in. Alright, now that we're done loading the file into the SD card, uh, all we have to do is just take it out and stick it into a Raspberry Pi and boot it from there. Here you're going to make sure that when you stick in the SD card, you're going to hear a click. And the rest is sticking in the micro USB card and the network. Here I decided just to use the USB power from my router to power my Raspberry Pi. And then I stuck the network directly into um, my router. And I'm just gonna let it hang for now because we're just gonna do a lot of installation. I'm not worried about being pretty yet. So there's actually two ways to get your IP address. One is to hook up everything on your Raspbian and pull it directly from the console. Or two, you could actually look into your router, pull up the DHCP list the way that I'm doing, and it should be able to find an IP for that device. Next, we're going to need PuTTY to access the console. And I already downloaded the program and installed it, but I'll leave a link in the descriptions below. So remember the IP address we got earlier? This is where you're going to have to put it. It's going to ask you that there's a security key, a SSH key. You're going to have to accept that. Yes. The login name is Pi, which you could change later on and the password is raspberry. And now I have access to my um, Raspberry Pi. 
Alright, so I'm guessing the first time we boot into uh, Raspberry Pi, we're gonna have to configure it. Raspberry Pi says it right in the screen. Config. Uh, expand the file system. That would be a good thing to do. Change the user's password. I would definitely recommend that. Something that you will remember. Uh, enable boot to desktop, which we don't need because we're not going to be using a desktop. Uh, language, yes. We're going to have to change the language on this. I don't even know. Um, I'm in US. So. English US. U. This one. UTF 8. To enable camera, we don't need it to add to branch track. Uh, we could overclock if we want. Right now it's on 700 megahertz. I'm gonna I, because I have heat sinks on mine and everything. I could probably run it at 900 easy. And we're done. All right. After we boot it into our Raspberry Pi, we're gonna have to do some uh, quick changes, which is updating some of the settings. I mean, updating some of the um, repositories. So we're going to do sudo app get update. We're going to need some command line food here so uh, if you feel up to it this is where it's going to get nerdy. Alright, finally that's done. I never actually really checked the hard drive space on this. I believe it's 8 gigs. Yep. 7.2, use 2.4, 4.4 available. All right, I mean, we can always stick a USB hard drive in here and make it larger, but uh, essentially I'm gonna have other projects that will create um, network storages and stuff like that with this system. So um, as far as this episode goes, we're mainly focused on setting up the torrent server for this Raspbian Pi. Now let's grab the program, which is called Transmission. And I'm gonna leave all the codes in the descriptions below. Actually, it will link back to my website. That way I have uh, more area to um, write down what I'm doing. Um, here's, a, here's a quick tip. So if you don't know what you're trying to look for, you can hit tab twice and here brings you up a list of what you're trying to search for. So I would type in sudo app get install tran tab tab and then it'll give me a list of what starts with tran. So right now what we're downloading is transmission daemon and after you hit that it will find all the missing repositories and install them along with um, what you're trying to install. So if the uh, transmission daemon requires that you have transmission common installed it will know that and install that alongside while you're installing the transmission daemon so that's one of the great things about um, AppGet or Ubuntu or Debian uh, systems is their um, repository system and how installations work now that that's completed uh, we are gonna have to make. Let's see. Um, Pi maker incomplete. Maker complete. So now we have two folders. One 
and it's for incompleted downloads or buffer you could say and the other one is for completed downloads so it'll move past the buffers and move it to a completed download section uh, from here we're gonna have to uh, set up some permissions that way transmission um, is allowed to write into the folder so here sudo user mod dash a group uh, transmission Oops. and Debian transmission to Pi. two exclamation marks will repeat the same command along top of the command that you just ran so you don't have to type out the whole command again so if you do change group like I did before it says operation not permitted because I needed to be under super user so I ended up using super user bang bang it'll actually run the same command with sudo in front uh, I'm just gonna hit up change this to complete that worked out. Uh, ch mod seven seven zero. These are folder permissions. Pi that in. Ch. We do the same thing for incomplete and complete folders. And now we can reload the daemon. Transmission daemon. You're gonna notice I'm hitting tab, and it completes my. Uh, uh, typing. Now that everything's reloaded, we're going to go in and change the username and password. By doing this, we're going to have to sudo back into the configuration settings. Go to RPC password and we can take that out. We'll change it to password and the username I'll change to admin. And we're going to have to change the RPC whitelist to star dot star dot star dot star. That way anybody from the network could access um, the um, web interface. Control X to save. Yes. And we'll reload the service. Now I'm just going to go into incognito mode. To make sure that I don't have the um, password saved already. 192.168.134.9091. Now the new one is should be Don password. Wait, did I switch it to admin? Yeah, it was admin password. Sorry. And here we go. So you can actually set all the settings using this gear icon on the bottom left download rate, upload rate, statistics, there's a little uh, gear um, wrench icon where you could actually change um, more settings, the speed, download, um, schedule times, and uh, places to download and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. So let's try downloading something. For our test, I'm actually going to be using Ubuntu uh, Desktop. And you can actually download it via torrent, so that's what I'm going to be doing. And let's download the BitTorrent 15.464 bit. Now it loads the torrent file, and I am going to upload that to our transmission program in our Raspberry Pi. Choose the file, upload, and let's see. 
Oh, there we have it. Now it's starting to download our torrents. Alternatively, you could actually use um, the URLs. And what this means is uh, when you're familiar with torrenting or downloading torrents, there's actually places where you could download uh, a copy and paste a, something called a magnet link. And that's where you would paste it instead of having to actually download the .torrent file and uploading it to the server. You could just insert the magnet link and it would, add, um, it would just download from there. You could right click on the torrent and remove it from lists, remove the whole thing, uh, move it up, down, pause it. Um, as far as the internal settings on how many concurrent downloads you could do, that's part of the settings that we were playing with earlier where we had to change the passwords and stuff. That's more the technical part um, in transmission. Okay, so there we have it. Now we have our very own torrent box and it's always going to be running. It's on a low power device. So that means I can constantly keep it running without the costly overhead. If you're wondering how you're going to get this file after you download it, now that's for another project we have where we turn the same Raspberry Pi to a network file server. I'm going to leave a link in the descriptions below and also put it up in the card. So if you want to check that out, you want to check it out now, I won't be mad. You could, you could just click on it. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Uh, if you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments below. If you enjoyed watching this, please hit that little like button. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of these uh, little projects in the future. So if you don't want to miss any of those episodes, hit that little subscribe button. That also helped me a lot. And again, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching my video. Please take a moment to subscribe. It helps me a lot. And if you haven't watched my previous videos, I'll post the link right here.